So I just thought I would talk briefly about an interesting relationship between some interesting facts. Um, now, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that one of the things that I talk about is how cheap it could be to solve certain problems and what we could do with money instead of throwing it at elections. For instance, Feeding America, they could solve like so many people's hunger problem very quickly. All they would need is an abysmally small amount of money. $20 billion annually could end homelessness or at least address it. Um, that's, that's not much compared to what the rest of the U.S. money is spent on. But like, I think it comes to a head when you realize what people spend money on in terms of elections, like how much money they spend. And I thought I would preface this first fact with uh, that information, because this first fact is uh, rather interesting. From Open Secrets, uh, I present to you 2022 midterm election spending on track to top $9.3 billion dollars. Midterms, yo. Midterms. They, they've got people so fucking excited about this midterm because you're, you're, you've got so much on the line, man. I mean, no, you don't. They're still going to do the same stuff that they were planning on doing before. The type of fascism doesn't really matter whether or not it's got a blue or red coat of paint. So, I thought I would bring up the $9.3 billion right here. Um, and then I thought I would bring up um, something else that's rather interesting. Hurricane Ian is hitting. And I do not mean to downplay the tragedies of those in those regions, right? They're about to lose a lot. There are a lot of people there who are going to lose a lot. But let me be real super specific. Um, there are people who are already weaponizing this. And I said on Twitter, with Hurricane Ian making landfall in Florida, some things to remember. The U.S. military pollutes more than 140 countries combined. They sent 60 billion plus to Ukraine's wars in 2022. And I can't even see as much as they sent now because, like... They canceled the reporting mandate, so they're not telling us how much uh, money they're giving to Ukraine because they stopped wanting to answer for it. Sort of like how um, Trump canceled the Obama-era drone reporting mandate, and Biden hasn't put that back, so Trump could drone however many people he wanted, and Biden can drone however many people he wants, and neither of them have to tell you shit. Just thought I'd interject there for a second. Um, if I interrupt me, it's okay. If other people do it, it's racism. Um, and more on the war machine. Because they also have been sending troops to Yemen. Right? They've been sending troops to participate in gem genocide. And they've been sending troops to Somalia. They've been sending troops to Syria. They've been sending troops to all the, the, the favorite hotspots. And they even... Uh, conducted a, an assassination of somebody in Afghanistan. So, hey, you know, all the times he lied and said that he was leaving um, and that, you know, they were done there. Uh, I told you so when I told you that he wasn't done there and that they weren't done there, you know, because I said that so many fucking times and was called insane, delusional, etc., etc. Um, but I was right, as usual. Um... So, and then I said, that's more than the $50 billion climate change budget in 2022. I'll get to that shortly. So, then I said, they're going to tell you that this is all the fault of climate change, and that it justifies more laws and more green spending, but they're not stopping being the biggest polluters. The state is the problem they claim to solve, and they use that problem to control you saying 
right? So that was my take on the situation. And uh, in order to get back to that, let me just bring something up from good old World Economic Forum, where they are saying three laws will triple U.S. climate change spending over the next decade. And uh, <laughs> they've got Victoria Masterson, a senior writer of formative content, saying that the U.S. government's spending on climate technology and clean energy will more than triple in the next 10 years under three recently introduced laws, a new report finds. The Infrastructure Investment in Jobs Act, CHIPS and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act include more than $500 billion of climate spending. The investment will help technology projects survive so-called valleys of death when technologies fall because of a lack of fail because of a lack of funding. Y'all, you know how I was saying that they were going to start pouring money into uh, transferring us to the new infrastructure? Hey, 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 I was right again. They're doing it right in front of you. Hey, so like, let's look at this and be very clear that I was right. And then, um, let's acknowledge that this is $50 billion a year going to climate spending. So, if they're sending $50 billion a year to climate spending, but they're totally okay with uh, funding a, a war machine um, that is polluting more than 140 countries combined, I just, I feel like... I feel like it's disingenuous. I feel like they're using it for greater control and it doesn't mean fuck about the planet. Because if you're spending that much uh, to enable the greatest source of pollution on the planet, which is the military, and specifically like the Pentagon, you can look this up, is huge military spending like fucking mass polluter, the biggest stain on the fucking planet is the military, they never stop having money for war. Ever. Because that's what these people are. They're fucking warmongering fascist pieces of shit. Okay? And so if they make a huge amount, a huge amount of pollution to go kill people overseas, hey, that's awesome. And if they just sell weapons to Saudi Arabia, five billion of them, and if they just give weapons that they already bought from the U.S. military industrial complex um, to Ukraine, hey, fan fucking tastic. Um, and 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 just you know, just I find that interesting. And while I'm finding that interesting, here's here's something else that's rather interesting. You'll see that there are people, um, people like this right, who have been demanding greater police funding for a while now, because our cops are unsafe, we need qualified immunity, they need to be able to do anything they want and get away with it, we need qualified immunity now, <laughs> let our cops get away with whatever they want, <laughs> they're too vulnerable, our poor, poor police officers, these satin flowers, they need our help. They need qualified immunity. Let them do whatever they want. And then, like, give them more money. We need more money. Give us more money. Or more money. And, like, strengthens de-escalation. Good fucking luck with that. They've been killing a thousand plus people a year on gunfire alone for, like, years now. They kill more people than mass shooters annually. And you want to give them more money? And you think this is going to de-escalate them? <laughs> And then he's, he's got the, the stones to be over here saying, back to Blue Act. Well, if you want something else that's rather interesting about this guy, he done did got ratioed for saying that his house colleagues and he are very concerned about the deeply flawed and unfair policy of blanket student loan forgiveness that will also weaken our most powerful recruiting tool at the precise moment we are experiencing a crisis in military <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> so he's over here saying 
that we can't forgive student loans because other people, otherwise people won't be joining the fucking military in order to pay them back. They won't be using their servitude to the United States government, which I will bring back up in case anybody forgot, to give themselves m more to servitude of the United States government. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying this. Holy shit. So, I think that's interesting. And I think something else that is interesting, to say the least, uh, is, is this. I said over here, not too long ago, that the people nearly $31 trillion in debt, they will never be able to pay back are trying to virtue signal about your student debt. And the people behind the education system want you to avoid thinking about how much of a scam it inherently is and how much it indoctrinates you, how much more it indoctrinates you than it ever educated you. They also don't want you to realize 92% of these loans are from the government. Because they want you to hate people like me for going against their scam. They want you to think that I'm taking something from you. So, I want the DOE and the rest of the US government abolished. I'm anarchist. So if people don't pay back loans to criminals in $30 trillion of unpayable debt, I don't care. Especially since the role of this branch of criminals is to indoctrinate children and bind adults to the system. One like on that, by the way. I, I don't get no love. So... Just thought I, I would bring this up. And also, just to be, like, you know, cheeky, um, I, uh, I finally found a credit service that, uh, that will show people this. I've never taken a fucking loan in my life. I don't have a student loan. I am not personally invested in this fucking process. I just know a scam when I see it, and I don't like people funding the U.S. fucking government. I'm right. And people wanted to use that against me, say that I was fucking, oh, you just want to get your uh, f fucking loans forget. No, I fucking don't. I never got those loans. You can donate to my Patreon in the description. I need fucking rent this month because I don't get government assistance. I have in the past, but never a student loan. Fucking food stamps, sure. I've never gotten a student loan. I don't have anything now and haven't for many years, right? Ever since I moved to Washington, I haven't seen a dime from the government. So, like, what the fuck? But, like, they wanted to make that about me, so I just thought I would flex this right here. I, I try to live within my means. So let's be clear with that. Um, and then let's talk about uh, the fact that abolishing the Department of Education and ending mandatory school would mean no shrieking about books, no worries about sex ed, 92% of student loans vanish, no cops or recruiters unless you want them, and you wake up at a reasonable time to learn, you don't get indoctrinated by the state, still people are mad. But I see this as an absolute win. Who could not? Oh right, fucking fascists. Who want their system to continue to be fun and run funded and run by people who are forced into it and kept there. People who thought they needed a student loan in order to <laughs> in order to, to, to get a, a job that'll pay reasonably at all, which is a scam a lot of the time anyway, right? They'll they'll they they'll they'll need that and then they'll go to the military and potentially die fighting wars that they don't understand because recruiters told them about the great benefits in paying off their student loans. That's fucking evil. It's evil, and he's crying about his evil system starting to collapse a little. And I thought I'd bring all of that up because I thought I would bring up the fact that, um, you know, the... <laughs> modern, uh, you know, prison system 
is what fuels the military. Right here, it's a great article. I'll read it for the people who are listening somehow. Across the world, people are protesting against U.S. intervention in Syria. Polls show widespread skepticism of the impending war. This was in 2013, so almost a decade ago. Rather than making Americans safer, intervention is likely to support forces connected to Al-Qaeda. Huh. Almost like they did during Operation Cyclone. Um, anyway, you can watch my video on the CIA to learn more about some interesting things, interestingly. Um, yet it still seems inevitable that the U.S. government will launch cruise missiles at Syria, escalating the country's bloody civil war. Why? Because politicians don't work for the people. As Thomas Knapp of the Center for the Stateless Society puts it, uh, politicians and soldiers work for and constitute part of the political class. Their job is to transfer as much wealth as possible from your pockets to that class's bank accounts. In that case, they're doing their job quite well. The war profiteers at Raytheon have seen their stock prices soar in anticipation of the Syrian war. As the Boston Herald reported on August 31st, the Waltham-based manufacturer of the Tomahawk cruise missiles expected to be used in an airline strike on Syria saw its stock hit a 52-week high last week at 77.93 per share. And it stayed near that high, closing yesterday at 75.41. Officials like John Kerry argue that this war is somehow a humanitarian response to atrocities by the Assad regime. But the corporations that stand to profit are no humanitarians. To the contrary, they have been involved in some of the most grotesque human rights violations of our time. By the way, the OPCW whistleblowers proved that the whole thing was a fucking scam and there was no chemical attack. But go on, everybody! Um... For example, war profiteers profit off slave labor. Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Boeing, and BAE systems all use pre prison labor to manufacture military equipment. Prisoners are often forced to labor under sweatshop-style conditions, and when they are paid, they often receive meager wages like 23 cents an hour. As William Hartung puts it, there is no greater restriction on a worker's rights than being stuck in prison. Profiting off prison labor creates an incentive to keep prisons full, which may be part of why America has the largest prison population on Earth. Most of America's prisoners are nonviolent offenders, and the majority are people of color. The racism and injustice of slavery remains, and war profiteers benefit from it. War profiteers also benefit from human rights violations at America's borders. Their products are used to violate privacy through pervasive surveillance at the border. They are wielded by border patrol agents who murder innocent migrant workers and break indigenous communities like the Tohono O'odham National Apart or Nation Apart. This aggressive border security helps bosses exploit and abuse undocumented workers. With the threat of deportation and a militarized border hanging over their head, they are deterred from reporting wage theft, sexual violence, and other abuses by their employers. So, once again, war profiteers enable exploitation, violence, and abuse. Then, there's the warfare they profit from worldwide. General Atomics profits by making predator drones that kill innocent in innocents in Pakistan and Yemen. A litany of corporations profited from the invasion and occupation of Iraq. Like the impending war in Syria, this invasion was justified largely under humanitarian pretenses. Yet rather than liberate Iraqis, this invasion brutalized him. them. The U.S. government murdered innocents, tortured prisoners, and illegally used white phosphorus, a chemical weapon, to kill Iraqis. But that, you know, that's like a totally acceptable chemical weapon, even though it's banned under the Geneva Convention. The U.S. can get away with that without being inv invaded or sanctioned for war crimes by the ICC they won't join. But, you know, Assad was definitely a good reason to invade Syria because of a fake chemical attack that didn't happen. And, by the way, also ignore that tear gas is also against the Geneva Convention, and so U.S. police are committing war crimes against their own civilians, sometimes partially in pursuit of filling their prisons so that they can continue to profit from war overseas. Are you noticing a pattern here? Because you should. So, um, as I was saying, um, American war profiteers made a killing from a war in which U.S. government crossed the very same red line they accused Assad of crossing. 
As Emma Goldman wrote decades ago, no one, be it individual or government, engaged in enslaving and exploiting at home could have the integrity or the desire to free people in other lands. End quote. By this standard, we must not trust the U.S. government or the war profiteers to uh, free anyone in Syria. Sound familiar? Maybe we shouldn't be trusting them in Ukraine either? Hmm. Damn! Darn! Fuck. That would be inconvenient to the narrative. That was Nathan Goodman at the Center for a Stateless Society. So I thought I would bring that up so that I could then bring up another interesting fact. Joe Biden wrote a crime bill which polices people like Hunter Biden. If Biden's bill would lock up a Biden and instead that Biden is protected, it's not about doing what's right. But this family is sacred. That was around the time when people were talking about how sacred the Capitol was. The laws aren't for them. Drugs, guns, not for you, prole. Back to work now. But Hunter Biden can have them. Now that Hunter Biden is being exposed by people at 4chan, of all places, for storing evidence of his crimes in the cloud which they leaked, it should be clear how these headlines line up with each other and why the president is doing a 180 on his life-destroying laws. Nepotism, yo. And I posted this saying, you know, an elderly Biden crime bill helped create the sentencing disparity for crack and cocaine trafficking, the stuff that the CIA helped with. <laughs> Lock the SOBs up, Joe Biden and the era of mass incarceration. Uh, he now plays down his role in overhauling crime laws with segregationist sen senators in the 80s and 90s. At portrayal today is at odds with his actions and rhetoric back then. Fucking Biden urges leniency for harsh crack sentences fueled by his crime bill. That was last year. Hmm. I wonder if he knows something's coming. Hunter Biden not making his own crack, living with his dealer and his family's effort to keep him alive. It's almost like nepotism. It's almost like protecting your own because it was never about protecting other people. It was always about being a criminal fucking family. You know, a criminal fucking family of criminals creating an enterprise out of slave labor. You know, which is also why he was totally a fan of the Patriot Act. Just saying. And while we're at it, Biden is a liar, and he does nothing but help cops. If you think hashtag Black Lives Matter, and you, you can't support Biden or Kamala, his crime bill, support of wars, and more, and her locking up of poor families with truant kids are anti-black. So is this stuff. So I, I went over how he gave $4 billion to the fucking cops. His budget doubled funding for a police, fund, for a police hiring program. <laughs> you know, he's sending more military equipment to our neighborhoods than Trump did. You read that right. That's from BLM. Our communities are being terrorized at a greater rate than they had been under Trump. The White House also said they were going to use COVID funds, right? The White House said it's Republicans who are trying to defund the police, which means they were pandering to the pro-police crowd. And Biden, warning of a crime wave, diverts COVID funds to police in snubbed progressives. <laughs> wow, that's almost like he's a disingenuous lying fucking hack and a racist fascist piece of fucking garbage. Hmm, it couldn't be, though. If you don't vote for him, you ain't black. Not like that wasn't propaganda designed to spur certain people. No, no, he would never be a manipulative lying bastard, you know? And while I'm at it, here's ways Biden disagrees that Black Lives Matter, his crime bill, he drafted the Patriot Act, he doubled counterinsurgency police funding, he pushed for virus stimulus spending on cops, he already upped the cop budget to $30 billion in 2022, wants $32 billion more now, and $30 billion over a decade in his Safer America ploy. He's a fucking pig sucker, yo. Can we agree on that now? No? Oh, fuck, man. It's almost like they want the indoctrination system funded so that they can keep making people believe this system is necessary so that they can keep creating slaves in the land of the free 
profiting massively off of it and having a cyclical campaign of police violence and war to constantly suck the blood from everyone based on. It's almost fucking like that, ain't it? Or maybe, maybe I'm wrong and all these facts just line up because of coincidence, you know? Maybe I'm just, I'm just, I'm just seeing too many dots connecting where they shouldn't be. Man, I'm just an insane conspiracy theorist. Don't listen to me. Aw shucks, oh golly gee. You know? Man. <sighs> just turn off, don't subscribe, don't like, don't share this. Don't rub this in the faces of anyone who voted for Biden or Democrats thinking they would get meaningful change. Don't do that. That would be bad. You know? And definitely don't educate yourself, your own kids, do your own research, help them in your own ways uh, to, to, to like form family businesses that last and are resilient against things like the COVID lockdowns, even though those were designed to shutter businesses like this and make people more dependent on mega corporations. You know, don't do that. That would be bad and you would be called names for it. Yeah. You see, I might just be a little tired of constantly having to defend myself from people who call me a fascist or who call me a commie or whatever, whatever the insult of the day is, because I support authentic uh, radical policies and authentic change. I, I am better than most of those people. I have better policy-like ideas than most of these people. I have solutions. But these people don't want solutions, and I get constantly insulted by all of them. So I just don't respond, or I respond cynically, negatively, or sarcastically a lot of the time, because I just don't fucking care anymore. Like, I can write all of the good content I want, I can put out all the good videos like this I want. People aren't gonna give a shit, and I'm gonna be insulted. So, Feel free to join in the insulters and tell tell me how terrible I am for opposing war, for opposing the prison industrial complex, for opposing domestic fascism and statist indoctrination. Tell me how terrible I am for all of this because I just laugh now. And meanwhile, anybody who authentically cares about the truth is willing to listen to people like me while we smash the fucking state.